Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Will you please stand for our opening prayer? of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we worship, and thine aid we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom your wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray after they have heard thy teachings. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Allah, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, the wonderful originator and creator of the heavens and the earth, the giver of life, the ultimate cause of death. I bear witness there is no God but Allah, who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, and I bear witness the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his messenger Messiah, and I bear witness the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is their divine reminder servant and warner in our midst. We greet you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. Brothers and sisters, family, indeed we are all deeply saddened over the shock, the news that we received of the unexpected transition of sister, student minister, doctor, Ava Muhammad. Our prayers and thoughts are with her husband, Brother Darius Muhammad, her daughters, Sister Sherelle, Sister Sasha, the grandchildren, the sisters of Minister Ava, and her entire family. Nothing and no one can give us the peace and comfort we seek and need but Allah. This is his irrevocable will. Why, Minister Ava? Why now? We have many questions. But in the final analysis, it is our faith in Allah and in what he permitted that can put our hearts and minds at peace. The Holy Quran tells us that our faith will be tried with something of fear, hunger, loss of property, lives, and fruits. And then the Holy Quran tells us and give good news to the patient who, when a misfortune befalls them, they say, surely we are Allah's and to him we shall return. Those are they on whom are blessings and mercy from their Lord and those are the followers of the right course. 
O you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer. Surely Allah is with the patient. And speak not of those who die or are slain in Allah, God's way, as dead. Nay, they are alive, but you perceive not. For those of us who are unfamiliar with the Islamic service for our dead, the service is relatively short as to not add any additional burden of sorrow to the family. As you can see in the program, it is very short. And the service that Allah God has given to us is in keeping with his chief attribute of mercy. You don't see flower arrangements because the dead no longer see. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we should not spend a lot of money in arrangements, that it's better to give the money to the family. There's no music or songs that are sung. It's a time to be sober-minded, a time to reflect on the life that touched our lives and that at some point we will also make our transition. So we are here to say thank you. Thank you, Allah, for your servant and for the gift that you have given to us and student minister Ava, Dr. Ava Mohammed. In our program, you notice that we don't have a lot of people coming up sharing remarks. We reserve that for a memorial service that is generally done 40 days after the funeral. We do have words from the mayor of the city of Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, to the family of Minister Dr. Ava Muhammad that we do wish to acknowledge. To the family of Minister Dr. Ava Mohammed, on behalf of the city of Chicago, I extend my sincerest condolences on the loss of your beloved Minister Dr. Ava Mohammed. I was very impressed to learn about Minister Dr. Mohammed's life, working as an attorney, serving as a legal advisor to the Nation of Islam and as a national spokesperson for Minister Louis Farrakhan, serving as a member of the Nation of Islam's Executive Council, making history as the first Muslim woman in modern history to hold a position of authority over a mosque anywhere in the world. All praise is due to Allah. Her work as much sought after national speaker and her love for her family, friends, and community. As you mourn the loss of Minister Dr. Muhammad, I hope you find comfort in her memory. Her legacy will always symbolize the values of hard work and integrity, community and compassion, strength 
and humility. Please know that my thoughts and prayers are with all of you who knew and loved her. Sincerely, Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago. In your program, we have the obituary reflections on student minister Dr. Ava Muhammad, a devoted, dedicated follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Student minister Dr. Ava Muhammad, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, sister, soldier, warrior, servant of Allah and his Messiah, a gifted gift from Allah. Was born Ava Atkinson to the late William H. and Gladys Louise Stovall Atkinson on November 9, 1950. She often spoke fondly of her ide I ideal upbringing in a prom prominent black enclave in Columbus, Ohio, where her parents instilled in her and her sisters, Carol and Lori, a love of history and literature and always ensured that they were aware of the events surrounding the civil rights struggle. Through personal conversations and public speaking, Sister Ava often drew references to the strength of being reared in an environment where strong black marriages prevailed and how that undergirded the foundation of her understanding that to have stable and thriving communities, you must have stable and thriving marriages. In fact, in one of her publications, Life in the New Millennium, How We Will Think and Eat, she expressed the profound love her parents had for her children and how they were married many years and they were married 15 years before their first child, which was me, finally came. They never got over the excitement of having children. Family was everything to Sister Ava. Student minister Ava Mohammed attended Columbia, Columbus East High School, where as a classmate reflected on how every time they saw her, she was never without a stack of books. She was honored to be the class speaker for her graduating class. The love of learning placed in her by her parents led her to graduate with honors early from Central State University which a with a Bachelor's of Arts in History in 1972. She went on to receive her Juris Doctorate in 1975 from Georgetown University Law School in Washington, D.C., and was admitted to the New York Bar the following year. Attendant upon her life was always, has always been the spirit to fight for justice. It was not long before she was serving as the Assistant District Attorney in Queens, New York. In 1980, fueled by the desire for justice, she went on to join other young black attorneys and started a successful criminal defense practice. It was during this time that she and her mother were diagnosed with breast cancer and they began undergoing chemotherapy. Having lost her father to lung cancer while still in law school, Sister Ava found herself on a search for spiritual answers 
to these overwhelming circumstances. It was during this search that she happened upon a poster in Harlem in late 1981 featuring a speaking engagement by none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The title of his subject on that poster was Truth Crushed to the Earth Must Rise Again. And during that lecture, the words spoken by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, quote, Allah empowers you to heal yourself impacted Minister Ava deeply. And after hearing that profound address on a Friday night, she immediately read How to Eat to Live, books one and two, by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad all night long. And by Monday morning, she told her oncologist, I have found somebody else. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Her immediate belief and faith led her to know that the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was where her true healing resided. When I heard the name Fard Muhammad, I was in love. And that love from that day continued to the final second of her last breath. She loved Master Far Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the nation of Islam and black people. No doubt about it. <laughs> Minister Ava said, I did not know who he was, she declared, but she joined the nation of Islam. It was this strong faith by the permission of Allah God in the person of Master Fard Muhammad that allowed her to overcome the cancer proclaimed to be a death sentence by the doctors of this world. And after joining the Nation of Islam, student minister Dr. Ava relocated to Chicago in 1983. In addition to being a legal advisor to the Nation of Islam and soon thereafter, an administrative assistant for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 1985. She was initiated into the ministry by Minister Farrakhan himself. After her first time speaking at the Final Call Administration building, she was a staunch defender of Minister Farrakhan throughout the country and the world and no one defended the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan better than student minister Ava Muhammad. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan counted her as one of his best ministers. And we bear witness. <laughs> Among the many contributions she made to the nation of Islam, a highly significant one was being an unadulterated vessel through which the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was able to deliver the revelation of God in the study guides, self-improvement, the basis for community development. <laughs> These courses of study serve as an immeasurable tool of self-development that is gifted to the whole of humanity. 
On August 19, 1989, she was wed to the one who would become her best friend next to Allah, Brother Darius Muhammad. Together as husband and wife, they traveled the globe. She continued to address audiences in almost every major city in America, London, the Caribbean, and more. Their personal love of travel took them to places such as Fiji, Aruba, Hawaii, Egypt, and Mexico, and they were exceptionally excited for the opportunity to travel on a Concorde jet to Paris. In 1991, they were blessed to make pilgrimage to Mecca. Sister Ava and Brother Darius always encouraged and inspired others to travel. Brother Darius, an accomplished photographer with an artistic eye, documented their life and journeys together with many of his photos becoming her book covers and lecture covers. On July 28, 1998, in the city of Atlanta, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan appointed student minister Dr. Ava Muhammad as the first Muslim woman in modern history to a position of authority over a mosque anywhere in the world. The first Muslim woman appointed to a mosque. She stated on that unprecedented day, quote, it is my fervent prayer that I succeed in my assignment in order to help the minister in his effort to destroy the myth that women are inferior beings who cannot preach the word of God or shepherd the flock. Through my appointment, Minister Farrakhan is manifesting the liberating force and power contained in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Sister Ava served as the Nation of Islam's Southern Regional Minister from 1998 to the year 2000 and shortly thereafter was appointed to the position of national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. She was also personally selected by Minister Farrakhan himself to serve on the Executive Shura Council of the Nation of Islam as well as the Nation of Islam's research group. Student Minister Ava Mohammed withstood the trials of being the first in many areas of her life, always desiring for the black man and woman to see themselves as Allah God sees us, his chosen people. She especially desired to empower black women throughout her various platforms featuring works too numerous to mention. One of the greatest joys of Sister Ava experienced in life was being a mother and a grandmother. She adored her daughters. She adored her daughters, Sherelle and Sasha and her wonderful, lovely grandchildren, Amir and Amira, immensely. One of her greatest desires was for her children and grandchildren to come out from under the harsh reality 
of racism in America. And this served as a major impetus for the drive for separation as outlined in the Muslim program by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Student minister Dr. Ava Muhammad manifested her deep abiding love for her teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Master Fard Muhammad. Through her tireless works on behalf of black people the world over in their names, she was a beloved helper to her teacher, a daughter, wife, mother, grandmother, sister, friend, mentor, attorney, student minister, author. I got to put in there soldier. I got to put in there warrior. I got to put in there a great fighter. She was fearless and courageous standing with her brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But above all, she was a believing woman, a woman of faith. And she wore the best title that any human being could wear, and that is the title Muslim. One who submits his or her will to do the will of God. She was a star. Sister Ava leaves to cherish in her memory, her beloved husband and best friend of 33 years, Brother Darius, two daughters, Sasha and Sherelle, two grandchildren, Amir and Amira, two sisters, Carol, Julian, and Laurie, Calvin, brother-in-law, Curtis, Michael, Jerry, and Terry, sisters-in-law, Shirley, Anne, Shirley Jean and Crystal, a host of nieces and nephews, and a nation and a minister that loved her dearly. All praise is due to Allah. At this time, her daughter, Sherelle will come and have a few remarks. Let us receive her lovely daughter, <laughs> Sister Sherelle. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. My mom's prayer, sacrifice, life, and her death were all for Allah. She gave her all. She worked with every fiber of her being in this cause out of desire to be pleasing to Allah. She always maintained a positive, high spirit, regardless of any trials or difficulties she was facing. This gave her a natural magnetism that drew people to her. She had a deep and profound love for the women and worked to uplift the sisters in the nation of Islam and women in general. She always talked about how 75% of the work is with the women. Out of her profound love for the women, she worked hard on the book, Naturally Beautiful, staying up day and night, proofreading it several times to ensure that women and girls have, will have something in their possession to remind them that Allah made us naturally beautiful, despite how Satan's world has characterized us. She always made time to give good advice to women who sought her counsel regarding their personal issues on their marriages, or she would always give them a good word that would leave them in high spirits. She had a great and full life as a member of the Nation of Islam. She was fully invested in her nation. She willingly gave her time, her talent, her mind, her spirit, her very being to the Nation of Islam. Whenever you talk to her, she was either going in a meeting, meeting with the Elevated Places team, working on study guides, proofreading books, getting ready for Friday night study group, or preparing for the Elevated Places radio show. She was all about the Nation of Islam. She lived a very full life and she's at peace now. She would not want us to grieve over her loss. 
She will want you to fully embrace and be pleased with the with the law's will, for he is the best knower. She has run she has ran her leg in the race. Now the baton is in our hands to carry on the work that she did. Let's carry on the work to separate and reclaim our own. Let's carry on to work and build a nation. Her love for Allah and the person of Master Farah Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was immense. The driving force of her life was her love for Allah and the person of Master Farah Muhammad, her love for the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and her love for the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Jesus in our midst. She worked tirelessly to do her part to make a great, the, the Great Commission known. She is known as one of the greatest defenders of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as taught by the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And if anyone came for the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, or even appeared to have the thought to do so, she was there like a fist warrior, wielding the weapon of truth to knock out the brains of falsehood. Out of everyone and everything physic physically among us, the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was her number one. Her love for him ran so deep that there was nothing that he could not ask for that she would not do. What keeps my spirits up in the most trying times are these words of the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that my mom always taught me. There is a difficulty factor attached to everything of value. There is a difficulty factor attached to everything of value. Her ultimate goal was to fulfill the desire of Allah, His Christ, and the Jesus in our midst that we fully separate from Satan's world. Now is the time. Now is the time. Stop holding on to false promises of our open enemy. Allah desires to give us his own. Assalamu alaikum family, we love you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Brothers and sisters, please remain standing as we receive the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you so much. Please be seated. To the family of Sister Dr. Ava Muhammad, to her sisters whom she loved so much. To her daughters, Sasha and Sherelle, to her nieces and nephews, and those who her life has touched. And that is all of us in this room and all those around the world who have come to know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam because she was a faithful teacher and guide 
for our people. I don't want you to take this as a time of sadness. It's difficult to be joyful when you've lost a great one in your family. But in the church, they say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There would be no Ava if there were no God to give her to us. He is her and our sovereign Lord. She came through her mother and father, but did not come from them. She came from God. He gave her to us. But when God gives you life, he also gives us time. And how we use our time that only God could give and the life that only God could give is the measure of your reward or your favor from God. When I was a young student in college in North Carolina, one day during the Thanksgiving vacation, I went with one of my college friends to Reedsville, North Carolina, and we went to church. I grew up in the Episcopal Church, and the Episcopal Church is, uh, is not full of joy and exuberant preaching, you know. And this was my first time to be exposed to a Baptist preacher. And that man preached that day. I only had a quarter in my pocket. But when he asked for charity, he got every bit of what I had. That was over, let's see, 53, that's about 60 some odd years ago. And I remember that man's sermon. I thought I would share some of it with you about my sister. Life is like a vapor. It appears for a short time and then it's gone. The Quran tells us that God is not prodigal. He doesn't waste things. The economy of America and the world is in trouble. They don't know how to get rid of waste. Well, that God is coming to take care of that. In fact, he's, he's here to take care of a lot of wasted stuff that needs to be buried. That man asked the question, what are you doing with God's time? 
That's a good question. Because most of us don't know how to properly use God's time. Oh, that preacher was preaching that day. And when he finished, I was thinking about how I was going to use God's time. And today, in our celebration of life for the incomparable gift, God gave to us in the person of sister, doctor, minister, Ava Muhammad. Now, if you want to clap, that's fine, but I want you to think. Because as I'm talking about our sister, I'm talking about her but I'm using her to talk to us because we are wasting a lot of time. And that we are going to have to answer to the God who gave us life and gave us time. That's what we do with the time. Well, you know, it's kind of rough out here. And uh, I never was educated proper, 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 properly. You can say anything you want to, but you cannot excuse your laziness, your cowardice, your loving to watch others work and we applaud. But when it's our time, to put in the labor and overcome the difficulty factors in our life. We say we praise God for Ava because she worked and her work touched us. But you and I are still the living. You got time. Time ended for her. I like that you called her a star, but you should have said one thing more. She was a star of God. Only God makes stars. The devil has a few phonies out here. Phony preachers, phony teachers, phony lawyers, phony doctors. Human beings that put on a mask when they come out of their house, who will I be today? Who am I going to be today? When I was in show business, there was a comedian. He said, you know, Get drunk and be somebody. Because you can't be somebody if you ain't drunk. Because when you're drunk, you can imagine all kind of madness. But you were here. And God did not forsake one of you. He gave you a gift that says how much he loves you. Now, you don't think that God cares about the little life that just came or the life that just left. I mean, he's not that interested. Don't lie on God. There's not a life that he gives that he's not concerned with the way that life lives. If he knows the sparrow that flies and falls, how much more are you than the bird that fell from the tree 
or the dough that the lion ate. God loves his creatures. And so I prepared, really I don't prepare stuff, you know. I just like to say what the Spirit leaves me to say when I'm in the presence of the people of God. My sister learned to love God by studying the majesty of his creation. Just think about this. I had a Rolls Royce one day. Wow, you did? Yeah. Because yeah. y'all helped me to get it. But I don't praise God for things. I praise God for the gift of the wisdom in my life of sacrifice. You can't be great and not be willing to sacrifice to achieve greatness. You cannot achieve greatness by being lazy and envious of others who show forth their gift and you have one, but your envy of others deprives you of acting on your own gift. I want you to listen to your brother today. Sister Ava was a lover of God. You just heard her obituary. She was suffering from cancer as was I, as are some of you. She didn't just go to the doctor. She heard something that brought her back to God. She overcame cancer. And when she overcame cancer, she knew that she had a step up on overcoming any impediment to her progress. You can't come back to God with excuses. Well, the white man, shut up! White man ain't God. He's playing God. But he looked good as an actor, but God is present now. And he's showing up the phony. And there's no Oscar for the white man or Satan or you for playing God but showing the world you are nothing but an enemy of God and an enemy of yourself. And since we've been read by Satan, what did being reared by Satan produce? Wow. What do you mean I've been reared by Satan? What do you know? Now I'm talking what the scripture says. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Is that who you are? Is that who we are? Born from a rebellious one who has read us as rebellious people, especially rebels of God. So the enemy now can make you love what God hates. and make you try to be what God calls 
an abomination. Ava loved Allah, and she knew that in order for her to be successful, she had to live a life that would grant her favor from God. God loves you and me, but he's not pleased with the way we are using the time that only he could give. So, you know, clocking for the Caucasian master on your job, he's watching too how you use your time. But what about God's time? How are we using the life that only God can give? You have to make up your mind today. Because if you use your gift properly or discover your gift, first you can't use it until you ex discover it. And some of us think, God don't like me. I'm considered ugly. No, you're not ugly. The thing that makes us ugly is when we rebel against God. I used to say in my radio broadcast, my beautiful black brothers and sisters, and one day I was with my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, brother, stop using the term beautiful because nothing that rebels against God is beautiful. Wow. You say, well, I'm beautiful. Look in the mirror. Yeah, do that. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Check out this fool and tell me some lies how, how pretty I am. Spend hours in the mirror fixing your mouth, fixing your hair, fixing your eyes, fixing other things that you think make you look beautiful in the eyes of stupid men. <laughs> Just listen. This is the, the Ava that I know, the Ava that I met, the Ava that was a hand to me in the most difficult job ever given to any man who ever lived, and that job is to raise a dead nation up and give you life. All life has a cycle to it. Every living thing has to come to birth. Every living thing has to observe nature, be fed by nature to be itself. That's why God loves his creation. You notice in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when it talks about how God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And he looked at it and said, ah, this is good. What made it good? because it obeyed the nature of its creation. 
Do you know your nature? That's what Ava discovered. She's a marvelous woman. She loved women, but she wasn't a lesbian. She loved women because she knew what a woman really is. And she wanted to help women be what God created them to be. I live in a beautiful palace made by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But you find me more now at a farm in the country observing God in the beauty of his creatures. I see the creatures come to life. I see them reproduce after themselves. I, I see them guarding against the enemy of that life and finally I see the cycle ends with death. But between life and death, there's a drive in the male to meet with the female of that species. Oh, that drive is in you. <laughs> it's driving you to death and destruction the way you're misusing your nature. What you mean, minister? I didn't come here to hear nothing like that. Yeah, you, you were coming to hear what she heard that made her the woman that you admire. You don't have no teacher like Ava or Ava's teachers. All of us have to go through the cycle of life. Some of us don't get out of the womb. Some of us die in the womb. Some of us die as children. Some of us die as young people who discover the nature that's in you to reproduce yourself. But it's a game people play. Satan plays the game with sex. You don't even look at your sex with respect of God. I want you to listen to me today. You don't respect the nature of God that walks in every one of us and urges us toward the opposite sex, not for us to play games, but for us to recreate ourselves. And ain't that something that when you have recreation, you're involved in foolishness, and you call it having a good time. Eva cut that time out a long time. Eva married a man that she could honor and respect as a man. She married a man. He's not perfect. None are. We do the best we can. And some of us ain't doing that. But I want to say something to you in her name this evening. I won't be long, but I'll be long enough. 
to get my point over in her name. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, heaven lies at the feet of mother. I want you to think with me. Heaven lies at the feet of mother. Why is that? Whenever you say heaven, God has to be present. Because without God, there is no heaven. So if heaven lies at the foot of mother, how do you look at your mother? How do you respond to your mother? I heard my beautiful daughter, Sherelle, calling on mom. Mom was gone. She was in so much pain. I want my Mama, I said, sweetheart, it's wonderful that you want mom. God gave her, God took her, but she brought you to the one who gave you life and will shepherd you like mother, better than mother, to the end of your day. Let's think about this. When the prophet said, heaven lies at the foot of mother, I want you to think about yourself. As a mother, even if you're not one, Soon you will be one. But God loved you so much. He created woman. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that God found in himself a woman. And he brought her out of himself. So the Quran says, he created you from a single being or essence. And he created its mate of the same kind. Look at you. From this day forward, when you look at a woman, stop looking at boobs and butt. And stop showing boobs and butt like get a jackass interested in what you showing rather than who you really are. If that's a little raw, that's the way I taught her. Sometimes truth ain't pretty, but it's wonderful to know it. Now look, babies don't know how to call on Allah, call on Jesus, call on Yahweh. Call on Yahovah. Huh. Who's God to the baby? Say it again. Say it again. When you are a mother, you're standing in the place of God as the nourisher, the nurturer, 
the feeder, the protector, the savior of your babies. When George Floyd was being beaten to death on the street, a grown man, he remembered mama. And he called for mama. It wasn't that he was a baby, but he always knew that when he cried, mama answered. And that devil that had his knee on his neck wasn't getting up from it, had no mercy in him. He wanted to kill that black man. So as he was dying, he called on mama because she's the true friend of every baby even when she's not fully herself, she'll try to be what nature tells her to do and be. Wow. Men like to be on women's breasts. Not a bad place to be at the right time, I guess. What, what? I'm not trying to be vulgar because when that baby cries and you put that baby on your breast, that's comfort coming to the baby through you. But God gave you breasts and God allowed milk to come in those breasts. And some of you love your body so much, you kill it. You don't put the baby on your breast anymore. You got this damnable fix-it thing that white folks made, that there's nothing in the world more healthy than even a sick woman's breast. Now, why am I saying this? That breast is feeding the baby not only milk, but it's feeding from your mind and your thoughts. And that's why the scripture says, a foolish child is the heaviness of its mother. A wise child maketh a glad father. Sisters, you have been destroyed. There'll be no kingdom on this earth until women are raised to be who God created them to be. Heaven lies at the foot of mother because when you say mama, you're actually asking for God. Help me, ma. Mama, I'm in trouble. Mama, I didn't do good on my exam today and that teacher is a mess. Mama, can you say something to me to help me get better with my teacher and whatnot. See, you're calling mama, but you're really calling God. And if you, as a woman, are properly prepared, then you'll be like Sister Ava, and she'll feed you wisdom. So God is a woman. 
wait, wait, wait now, Farrakhan. You, you, you. Uh, I see why Ava li liked you so much. <laughs> she, she did love me. She did. She loved me and deeply admired me and treasured the words that came from me. And those of you who have been taught by Ava, whenever she told you of how we did the study guides, If she told you, she didn't tell you we were playing. She couldn't say the minister was hitting on me. I want you to think. She saw a man that saw her beauty, but he reached for her beauty. Not the physical beauty. He reached for the beauty that only comes from God. And she was a beautiful woman. So, not only does heaven lie at the foot of mother, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me that the only heaven for a man is found in a woman. I'm going to say it again. The only Heaven you're going to get in this life, you will find it if you know how to bring heaven from a woman. Because you certainly have found hell, all right. From the same woman that God has made to bring you heaven. See, when you're operating with a fool, you can't give him the best that God put in you. So you live your life empty, empty. Because we as men, in order for us to bring out of her the heaven that God put in her, we have to be one with God. I call this mosque the only one in the world. I named it after the mother of Jesus. Do you know why? Mary is the only woman that God gives a whole chapter in the Quran to her and he's talking about her throughout the book. You say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. See, you really don't know what you're talking. If there's a God coming from the womb of a woman, it's coming from a woman that had contact with God. Well, I want you just a few more minutes. And it's Labor Day, and I'm laboring today.
Look at this mosque. Look at the row that comes from the exit to here. It's like the vaginal tract. These wings are like the fallopian tubes. Yeah. An egg comes out. And the word of God from a good man of God touches that life. And if you follow the teachings, you'll grow up to be like Jesus. I want you to listen, because that's who you're looking at, a man born and made a Jesus for you. A man like me don't come along every day. I'm so different, so unique. That when women see me, even nice women, good girls, they want a real man in their lives. Ava suffered to be a minister doctor. You know why? The Savior called us laborers. Because when you work to raise up a dead nation of people, you are in labor. And there's no labor without pain. There's no labor without discomfort. So preaching is not for phony people. You want a nice car? You can squeeze that out of your followers but they're going to squeeze the hell out of you before it's over if you don't produce. Don't give women things thinking that you've done the right thing by her because then you're making her a thing. So you dangle things at her and like the dog that's trained to jump at the hot dog that you got on a string. You make men into dogs by the way you carry yourself. This is a part of the teaching. When they leave out of these doors, you have a budding messianic person. Yeah, that's who Mary is. She's a mother of God. So if you know who you are as a woman, don't settle for no junk in your yard. All right, I'm going to wind this up. Next year, this time, I'll be ready to say I'm finishing. <laughs> I want to talk about the love of labor. The Bible says, don't shrink from the labor of spreading the gospel. 
Don't complain when the people you laboring to raise turn on you like some of the children turn on their parents when the parent is trying to make you better than what you're inclined to be. It's a labor of love. But God put an end to her labor. A woman so valued, so needed. Why, God, did you put a period to her life so soon? so unexpected. One of us was permitted by Brother Darius. He was the door to her. You want anything done, you go through the door. You try to go through, without going through the door, you a thief. And, and Darius don't like thieves. I'll get off that subject. Might have some killing to do. But he permitted a brother to be in the room when an autopsy was made on her body. She was covered. It was so beautiful the way it was done. But he saw them do what I don't think I would like to see done. But in that autopsy, listen to the toxicologist. A full report is going to be given to Darius and to the uh, council. But we want to know what happened to our sister. Don't you think we should? She wasn't sick. She wasn't in failing hell. She went for something. And afterwards, she said, I don't feel well. And she was seized by something. And the pathologist said her death was acute. I didn't know what that meant under these circumstances. So we looked it up. Acute means of a bad, difficult, or unwelcome situation or phenomenon present or experienced to a severe or intense degree. She did not die from a heart attack. She did not die from a stroke. Her body was clean. Wow. I, I, I thought that she had a heart attack or something. Not Ava. No stroke. That's the pathologist's initial finding. The rest is coming. But look at this. It's an unwelcome situation or phenomenon experienced to a severe or intense degree. Why is death called 
in the Quran the evil accident of time. We all know if you're born, one day we'll return to God. Death will touch us. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Do you believe that? Because yes, everybody you know that died should have told you your time is coming too. My time is coming. Ava's time had come. What about it, God? This is a noble woman. But at the end of something she was doing, he put a period there and followed it with exclamation points. Look at this now. Look, look, look. Just give me a few more minutes. Muslims say, think not of those who die in the way of God, slain in the way of God as dead. They are alive, but you perceive not. Is there something wrong with your perception? When you're looking at somebody dead that they're not responding that they used to respond to, what are you looking at? Brother Ishmael said, you're looking at the irrevocable will of God. We can't change this. We can't turn it back. We can't do nothing with this but to accept it as the will of God and say, my time is soon coming. She, she used her li life and her time beautifully. But death came like an enemy. Death don't make you happy. When it comes, especially when it comes to somebody like Ava, you didn't expect it. It was like that punch that was thrown that you didn't see coming. And it knocked you for a loop. And what happens to most of us when God does his work, we think, why did he do that? I don't like that. We begin to lose faith in God and his wisdom. He put a period to her life at the time that he wanted to put a period there. Some of you have heard me say that I was with Elijah Muhammad one day. Martin Luther King had just been shot to death. I was on the radio trying to warn my brother because I felt he was approaching death. He knew it. His disciples knew it. But if it's for you, you can't run from it. Martin Luther King embraced it. And right now, he speaks from beyond the grave. Now just think about what I'm saying. When you know that man's history, he'll be talking to us for generations to come through the beautiful life that he lived the sacrifice that he made and the death that he suffered. So now I'll take in my conclusion.
She's a star of matchless beauty. I didn't like even looking down on her because she was always uplifting. Everybody she met and taught, she was uplifting. I said of her, a star has died with a period. Listen to what the messenger said. As long as you're alive, you are writing your testament. But when death comes, it puts a period to your writing. She's not writing from that position, but she's still writing. Listen to what I'm about to say. Don't think of her as dead, because people that live life like she lived her life, they're not dead because her work lives. Her words live. And Sherelle, when I heard you this morning, I said, Mama lives. Mama lives again. I'm getting very weak, and I don't think I will be able to fully say what I intended to say, but I'm at the door of that now. I don't want you to think when I sit down, and I'm so comfortable now I'm going to talk forever but I'm going to sit down just for a few minutes. that piece in there. turn from the nice man that I'm trying to be. <laughs> yeah. So I, if, if you all were ready, I would have been fine. Now let me finish this. Why did Brother Minister Ishmael say, the ministers, she was the best. Is that just hyperbolic talk to make the family feel good? Huh? Look at how we look at Ava. Do you really mean what you said? 
You do, huh? See, brothers, when a woman loves a man, there's something that love triggers in the woman. Men don't easily love men like that. Because your ego keeps you. Wait a minute now. I'm going to close this show right. See, men are so filled with envy. And they got all this ego crap running around in their sick minds. They don't want to give justice to something that they know they cannot, cannot du duplicate. I want you to think of yourself now with envy of a man of God. See, that was not in Ava. Well, I tell you, man, I'm not comfortable. Well, that's good for me, not to be too comfortable, so I'll get out of here. You use the arm on the chair. You use the knees. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is the son that's always by his father's side. We're going home now. Ava loved purely. She wasn't expecting nothing from me but the word of God and treating her as she ought to be treated. And that's what made our relationship so special. That's why I've asked for the sisters to give a report on how we related to each other because that's how men when women come to help you, don't always think that they're bed partners. Oh, I'm comfortable now. Sister Ava was a special woman. Ooh. I can't even remember telling a joke, and I'm always, you know, got a little joke in me. I think I wanted to be a comedian until God told me it ain't funny. With Ava and me, it was strictly the business of God. She fed from a word, and she was faithful to that word. And because she was faithful to that word, she was faithful to what that word came to us to do, to resurrect us from a dead level. And I got to say this to the brothers. See, I heard that the messenger told his children 
You don't love me like Farrakhan loves me. Now, he is a man that knows what love calls you to do. A woman's love for her child is such that she'll face death, be out in the woods, and a bear comes up, and the woman challenges the bear for the love of her child. See, preachers don't have that kind of love. Only those called by God have that kind of love. Because when the wolf comes, the fake shepherd runs. But couldn't no enemy stop Ava from telling the truth right to their lips, right to their face. That's Ava. Ava the teacher of moral turpitude. Look that word up. Ava was God's star. And when death came so sudden, I actually felt a hole in my being. I knew I had lost something or someone with great value. I said the same yesterday at the memorial service for Nasik Asiel Ben Israel. The first day I decided to rebuild the work of Elijah Muhammad in the audience was Nasik Asiel Ben Israel. And he came to me with two of his soldiers. And he said, Brother Minister, I will help you. And the way he wanted to help me, he wanted me to meet his teacher. And he took me to Israel. Imagine the minister in Israel. I, 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 I wouldn't have been strong enough to go on my own. So Nasik came and he asked me if I would come with him. I said, okay, brother. And when I met Rabbi Ben Ami, and I met the Hebrew Israelite community, I met one of the most beautiful communities I had ever had the joy to meet. I did not, listen, I did not believe that he was in fact the Messiah, but he sure was doing a messianic work. And for that, I loved him. But it was ACL that brought me to him. Like Brother Malcolm brought a lot of people to meet the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He wasn't Elijah Muhammad. But he was the closest thing that I knew. But when he broke with his teacher, I couldn't hang out with him. I went with him. The other day, in a meeting with the executive council, I told them how Elijah Muhammad wedded me 
to his son, Warithuddin Muhammad. So no matter what he said about me negative, you ain't never heard me say negative things about him. God made me bigger than that. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me of Wallace in such a way that Wallace was the man that he always wanted to continue his work. And unfortunately, Wallace did not wish to do that. He had his work to do. But the same thing he told me about Wallace actually happened February 26, 1955. He told me that in the act of procreation, his mind was so much on Master Fard Muhammad that he was in the very life germ as it left him to produce W.D. Muhammad. How could a man tell me that about his son and I mess up that? That means to me at that time Wallace was the hope of the father. But when Wallace said to the father, I never believed that that man in that picture was God. It broke his father's heart. I've told some of you my experience being in Boston, feeling the pain of my teacher. I got up one night out of my body and traveled to Chicago. Next door to the palace today is where Wallace grew up on the third floor of 4847 South Woodlawn. And when I came to the window, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was sitting on the bed and he was crying like I never heard a man cry before. And over and over again, he was saying these words, my son, my son, my son. And at that window, I whispered to him, I'll be your son, dear apostle. And I'm waiting for him to acknowledge me at the window. He don't even turn. I said it again. I'll be your son, dear apostle. And when he didn't acknowledge my presence, I went back to Boston and got in my body. The next morning, I picked up my Bible, and I was reading about David and Absalom. And Absalom had raised an army against his father. And David told his captain who was going out to fight his son, don't harm my son. Even though the son was doing an evil thing against the father, the father did not want any harm to come to that son. And when I opened the Bible and saw it in the history of David, saying over and over again, 
my son, my son, my son. I am not judging, but no son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad carried on his work. It was the children of the situation that Malcolm condemned him for. They loved their father enough to want to continue his work. But they got a little sickness too. Because they believed that this should be theirs. When you threw your father away, They came to me one day and said, Fire Khan, my dad said that you should give me, give us some of the money from the sale of the books that my father wrote. And I told Emmanuel, his oldest son, I said, brother, your father didn't write none of these books. These books were written by the messenger of Allah. Wait a minute. And if you don't believe that he is that, don't come asking me for nothing from what he did as the messenger of God. And nobody can say that I or any member of my family did it no harm to the Muslim followers of Waratuddin Muhammad. I love them because they sacrificed their lives that we would have a foundation in Islam to build on. But to close this, I said of Sister Ava, she's a star of God, dot, dot, dot. See, stars don't die. They, their light goes out. But the light of the star travels through time and space. Even though the star is light years, billions of light years away that it died, but its light is reaching us right now. Hmm. Ava is a star of God. Her light was extinguished in death. But down through the ages, people are going to read what she wrote, listen to the words that she spoke, and she'll be making people to see the value of what her teacher taught her when all of us are turned to bones. That's right. Be true to your calling. She was true. And God took her life so acutely till the pathologist said it was an unwelcome situation phenomenon experienced to a severe or intense degree. Brother Darius was there watching her trying to catch her breath. God, Brother Darius, put an end 
to the life that only he could give. But he made sure that she died in a way that she will never die. Those of you in, in finished with you ministers, the reason I am sitting in the seat of Elijah Muhammad was because of my unequal love for him. And you are with me, but your with me is not like Ava. But if you want to be a greater minister, you do? Yes, sir. I've given you an example. If you follow the example that he's made of me, you'll be like me. Listen to his words. Elijah Muhammad said these words. It's in the table talks that his great grandson has. has. He's talking to me about love because I was telling him about his love. I'm closing with this. You don't love deep enough. Your love is it's like a fickle. And that's why people can come and take you right off the path with the offer of a little money here, something. They can deceive you because your love is frivolous. So Satan promises he's going to make all deviate. He didn't get her. He did not get her. Did you know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me, they've laid many traps for you, brother? Do you know what many traps looks like that's a whole lot of trickery by Satan that he played on me and listen to the messenger's words you trip them up but you'll never get caught in one Job was among some people that were the sons and daughters of God and they came to present themselves before God and Satan saw this stranger walking among them. He said, Satan, hey, hey, hey. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> Whence cometh thou? And you know what Satan said? I came from walking up and down, to and fro, in the earth, seeking whom I may devour. And then Job was a trump card. I don't, when I say a trump card, <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with that devil. <laughs> but you have to have a trump card when you're dealing with Satan. 
And unless, I'm talking to the ministers, unless you are willing to take off the old man, which is after Satan, Adam, he got tricked and put on the new man, which is after Christ Jesus, you won't make it. You got to put on the whole armor of God. Now, let's go. My sister here, cried out, exclamation points all across her name in the end. A sudden cry or remark, especially expressing surprise, anger, or pain. And that's what we express when we heard that we had lost our sister. God took her life. I don't care if they tried to hurt her and God said, let it be. There's a bigger purpose for her life. When you all thought I was out there singing the swan song, and some of you scholars started writing what you thought it was going to be. Ava didn't do no stupid talk. She had an uncanny knowledge because her heart was pure concerning me and the God and the messenger that I represent. If you want to be here on my return, you're going to have to divest yourself from some of Satan's way that is crept into most of you. And if you don't make that move, God is going to make it for you. So, she made it. She's with her Lord. And we'll be studying about her for a long time to come. This is probably the longest eulogy which you're not supposed to give at a janaza. Uh, you do what you want to do. I'm doing what Allah wants me to do. I hope it lifted your spirit. I hope it made you know the value of your sister, your mother, your sister, your brother, your loved one. There is her flesh and blood returning to the earth, but she ain't there. She's with her Lord. I ain't going to tell no lie. We're going to see her again someday. I ain't going to tell you that. Only if it pleases God. But when people die, they go. And they, they, they give up the flesh, and the flesh turn to ashes and dust. And soon one day, you and I will be like that too. So think about what you're doing with God's time and make up your mind to stop the foolishness that comes from envy and 
jealousy and self-hate and stand up for God and his Christ like she always did. So when Brother Ishmael said she was the best of the ministers, that's right. She was the 13th of the 12. Wait, wait, wait. Because she wasn't one of the 12. If you go to Europe and in Vienna in Austria, look at the grand picture on the walls of a couple of cathedrals that have Jesus at the Last Supper. And at the Last Supper, there, there's a woman. You don't see her in no other pictures, but the picture of the 12 that you see in Vienna and in another city, there was a woman on the bosom of Jesus. And when they sold the picture, they, they, they moved the woman out. That's why this world is no good. It's no good because of the way it treats women. And don't you aid this enemy another moment in time by disrespecting your woman, disrespecting your mother, disrespecting yourself as a woman. A man don't deserve pleasure from you when he gives you a pain where we won't talk about. Thank you for listening. We're going to have the Janaza prayer now. It's only a few minutes. And that prayer will be conducted by Imam Sultan Muhammad, the great grandson of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we will stand, a few of us, in front of this. And then everybody, I don't, I don't want you stand and listen like we do. The women can sit down and no, you women stand up. Stand up with the men. And when we pray, you pray. Because without the prayers, we wouldn't even be here with the way our mothers were treated. So, the Janaza prayer. I got this. I'm sorry. Oh, I love you too. Father Flager, I love you too. I love all. Uh, oh, Reverend Al. Come on, come, 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 come. Here. I got to hug you before I say the prayer. No, I'm coming, coming down with you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Some of them, dear brothers. Okay. Form the lines. Where's the captain? Uh, right. I'm going to come behind you okay. and say the final words, then I'll call him. Okay. Oh, he said I missed a word. And we don't want to do that. It's the words of Elijah Muhammad. Listen to what he said about your brother. He said, I love 
you know, you talk about love. He said, I love you. And it was approved by God long before I was born. Now, just turn those mind, words over in your mind. The love between Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan was in the writings before we were on the earth at all. We were talked about. Love is the answer. And if you don't love, you cannot live the life of God. They want me to stand. They're going to take my chair. Oh, it feels good to stand. I'm going to stand with you. I can stand here with you. If you can, that that will be good because you can hold on to Yeah, I'll stand right here with this as my support. My leg weak because of radiation poisoning that the enemy did to me. But I'm here. You instruct them on how they should pray with brother. Those that are Muslims, you know how we perform our prayer. So we will follow the Imam in the prayer service. Those of you who are unfamiliar, you may follow us as well. He will recite the prayer in the Arabic language followed by the English translation. Thank you. This is the way the minister wants to do it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Allah, I seek thy refuge from the accursed devil. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship, thine aid we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom your wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد 
كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad. As thou did bless Abraham and bless the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and make the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Allahumma gfir li hayyina wa mayatina wa, gha- wa shahidan wa ghaibana wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakara wa unthana Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar O Allah grant protection to our living and to our dead and to those who are present and to those who are absent and to our young and our old and to our males and females. O Allah, whomsoever you cause to live from among us, make them to live in submission to your will. And whomsoever you cause to die from among us, make them to die in faith. And O Allah, Do not deprive us of her reward and do not make us fall into a trial after her. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Allahumma tahrim, Allahumma la tahrimna. Ajrana ha, wa la ghaibana. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah. 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 That ends the prayer. Remain standing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that we should take a bit of sweets in remembrance of the one that is gone. So will the brothers and sisters that have the peppermints come down quickly and everyone take a peppermint And as you, thank you. When you put this peppermint in your house, 
in your mouth, it represents the fullness of the life of the deceased. But as you put this in your mouth, the natural juices will wear away the candy as the natural forces of life take our lives away and what is left in the mouth is the sweet taste of what was. And what she has left behind is the sweet taste of a life well lived and a job well done and everything that she did of righteousness is as sweet or sweeter than this candy. Thank you. Now, Brother Captain. To our seats and everyone please remain standing. We need to clear the center aisle. Stay right there, you, family. You, you're fine. Just, Sherelle, if you can go on this. Yeah, can. That's fine. Yes. Assalamualaikum. For our sister, who we know and understand is a warrior, for Almighty God Allah, we are going to treat her as a warrior, as a soldier, and we are going to salute her. What, when I call for us to give an original salute, we will bring our right hand up to our right brow very quickly. And then on ready front, we will do it slowly. Original salute. Ready front. Takbir. 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 The honor guard will come now. Brothers and sisters, we will now prepare for the procession to the final resting place, which is at Oakwood Cemetery. We ask that if we can carpool, that would be easier and more accommodating, and we won't have perhaps a lot of traffic if you would make room in your vehicles for others who wish to go to the final resting place. The funeral director, brother, uh, dear brother, brother Otto, he will, everyone outside will be instructed on how to line up for the procession. But at this time, we'd like you to stay uh, where you are so that the honor guard can carry the casket. Honor guards. Set up honor guards. Fall in. Move up. Honor guards, fall into position. Do we need to? Yes. Thank you. We're going to return. up in this turn. No, no. Yes. We're turning it. 
Turn the casket, head that way. Turn this way, head that way. It should be moving. They will lift the body of our sister to their shoulders because a warrior like her should be honored the way all great soldiers are honored. First face, face the casket. Release it. Original, release. Original, salute. Reach. And lift. Our shoulders. so we can roll it from here. We're going to roll it from here. It's not enough space. You have it? <coughs> we'll just... Yeah. All right, let's come down. and take your positions. Move forward in front. You can, you can walk it up. Stay stay. Forward, march, lift, 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 right, lift, you lift, you lift, you lift, right, lift, you lift, you lift, you lift, right, lift, you lift, you lift, you lift, right. Left, your left, your left, your left, right, left, your left, your left, your left.
tarde.